Hey folks, Paul with Marshall Business Matters. Today we're talking about average student value. What average student value is and why understanding average student value is actually super important to how we operate our school. Average student value is a representation of what the average student is bringing in in terms of revenue on a monthly, quarterly, or annual basis. And there's a different uh, set of parameters that we look at to see uh, which of those numbers we're going to use when we're talking about average student value. Average student value isn't just one number. Uh, we have to look at it from, are we looking at average student value on the monthly basis, on the quarterly basis, or on the annual basis? And today we're just talking about average student value in general. Stay tuned for future videos where we dive in a little bit deeper. But for now, let's get right into it. What is average student value? Well, I just said. Average student value is the average amount of money that the average student is bringing in on X basis of time. For simplicity's purposes, we'll just say that on a monthly basis, we'll use monthly average student value for the purposes of this video, we'll say that the average student value is how much money an average student is bringing in each month. And you can figure this number pretty simply. Let's say that you have, I don't know, 100 students. You've got 100 students and your school is generating uh, $10,000 a month in revenue. Well, that math is pretty easy. You divide 100 into 10,000 and you end up with 100, which means that your average student value in that circumstance is $100. Okay. So far, so simple. But what do we think about when we say average student value in the big scope, in the big picture? Well, I think about how we can adjust average student value and by making minor adjustments to the average student value, start bringing in big impact for my school's bottom line. Let's continue on. Average student value, again, is how much money an average student brings in in a month for the purposes of this conversation. How much money an average student brings in in a month? And we'll continue using that same example. We've got $10,000 in revenue. Out of 100 students equals an average student value of $100. So far, so simple. And here's where we start getting into some interesting conversations. What if your average student value wasn't $100? What if your average student value was $110? If your average student value went up, if this number went up by just $10, a month. What would that do to this number? If you had the same number of students and you brought the ASV, the average student value, up by 10 bucks, what would it do to the actual revenue, to the gross revenue? Well, 10 times 100 and that $10,000 becomes $11,000. Let's say that we're thinking smaller. Let's say that we're seeking uh, smaller potatoes. And we say, well, getting the average student value up by $10 is actually a pretty big uh, burden. What if we only get it up by $5? What if we get the average student value up by $5? Keep the same 100 students, then your average student value of $105 per student equals $10,000. $500 in revenue that month. And so this is what I'm trying to say. I'm saying that small gains can have a big impact. Let's say that that average student value is 100 bucks, but instead of 100 students, we have 200 students. 
And we take that average student value of $100. In this case, obviously, if we had 200 students at $100, then the revenue would be $20,000. If we increase the average student value by 10 bucks, what's 10 times 200? 2,000. So we can raise the, the uh, average student value to get an, an increase to the gross revenue of $2,000 just by raising the average student value by $10. Now, this is just simple math and we're using easy numbers, multiplying hundreds by 10 and by five. But this applies across the board. It doesn't matter if you have 50 students, it doesn't matter if you have 75 students, it doesn't matter if you have 100 students, 150, 550 students. But what's fun and what's actually meaningful is that the more students you have, the bigger the impact of minor increases to the average student value. So we can talk about things like retail. Retail sales increase the average student value in your school. If you start selling more in terms of product, pants, uniforms, keychains, belts, whatever, the more you sell out of your retail operation, the more the little meter ticks upwards in the average student value. And it's not gonna be massive gains. But an extra uniform here, an extra set of sparring gear there, an extra keychain or an extra school t-shirt or an extra gear bag, it does actually affect the bottom line in terms of average student value. Because if you've got 100 students, you've got 100 students, or in this case, let's say you have 200 students. If you've got 200 students, and on average, if you look at your retail sales, you see you can do this exact same thing with your retail sales. You can say, well, over the course of the last month, my, my retail uh, operation took in X dollars, and after I subtract away uh, the cost of goods, then my, then my net profit from the retail sales was Y dollars, and I've got Z students, so it's Y divided by Z. That's how much the average student is spending in my retail uh, every month. And if I'm able to get that to tick up just a dollar or two, that directly affects the average student value in totality. So if on average, a student in my school is spending $7 a month in the retail section of my school, and I'm able to move that ticker from $7 a month to $8 a month, and I've got 100 students in my school, then by just ever so slightly moving the ticker from seven to eight, my school made $100 more that month. And if I can be consistent in that, then my school will keep making that extra $100 every month. What's another example of something that we can use to increase average student value? Seminars, clinics, things that your students pay you for that aren't part of the regular hum and drum of your school's operations. You've got your regular class schedule, but if you have the opportunity to use the space that you're leasing for other times beyond your regular class schedule, you can sell seminars, you can sell clinics, you can sell intensives. If you have any familiarity at all with uh, the dance community, ballet, tap, jazz, modern, intensive seminars are a big part of how those schools make a lot of their money. They offer an intensive on point or they offer an intensive on rhythmic tap and they sell that, that uh, clinic or that seminar to their existing student population. They say, yeah, you're paying your tuition and that gets you into the regular classes, but if you want to come in and really dive deep into this particular subject, then you need to sign up for this intensive. And by the way, that's an extra couple hundred bucks. And that's the business model. And the thing about that business model is it works. Now you might only get five, 10% of your student population to buy in to those types of events, to buy into those clinics, to buy into those seminars, those intensives, but those five or 10% of your students who buy into that, 
they raise the average student value for your entire school. Let's say that you run a seminar, uh, I don't know, grappling. You run a seminar on grappling and you've got those uh, 200 students. You run a seminar on grappling, you've got 200 students, 10 of them buy into that seminar. And let's say that you're selling that seminar for a hundred bucks. You're selling that seminar for a hundred bucks and you get 10 out of your 200 students to buy into that seminar. That's 5% of your student population. And those 10 students who paid a hundred dollars for that seminar, that earns you a thousand dollars for running that seminar. You get to divide that thousand dollars back into your total student population. So you increased the average student value. You've got 200 students and you got an extra thousand dollars. You get to distribute that across all 200 students, not just the 10 who bought into the seminar. You've increased your average student value by what? By what? 50 bucks. <laughs> no, wait, five bucks. <laughs> I can do math. What, uh, how, how many times does 200 go into 1,000? Five times. So you increase your average student value by $5. And so if we're looking to increase the average student value globally by $10, as we were doing in the original example, when we had 100 students and the revenue was just $10,000 and we wanted to bring the revenue up to $11,000, we realized that we needed to raise the average student value by $10. Using that same uh, scenario as before, let's say that 5% of those 100 students buy your $100 seminar, that's an extra $500. So that month you made $10,500 which means that your average student value is $5. And let's say that you also increased the, uh, the revenue in your retail sales by, I don't know, a dollar, two dollars per student. Let's say that you got your average student value up to $108. So you got $108 per student just by kind of upselling a little bit in your retail section of your, of your school and you had that one seminar where 5% attended at $100 a head. And so now, just by making those few modifications, you've brought your gross revenue from 10,000 to 10,800. And I didn't have to get a single new student. And that's kind of the key. This system is important to understand because you can, you can increase your gross revenue without ever landing a new student. And of course there's a theoretical limit to how much you can increase the average student value by. But remember in any body of water there's going to be guppies and there's going to be whales and your whales, if you can sell more to them, will drag up the average student value for all of the guppies as well. So seminars, clinics, intensives, increasing uh, your sales out of your pro shop, out of your retail section, private lessons. Private lessons in the martial arts industry are, are pretty standard and depending on what kind of style you teach and, and where you're located demographically, you might charge 60, 80, 100, $200 for a 30 minute or hour long private lesson. And if you do that, then you're on the right track because again, every private lesson that you sell, it increases the average student value for your entire school population. Let's say that you charge $100 for a one hour long private lesson. So you, you charge $100 for a one hour long private lesson and you sell I don't know, four of those, four, four private lessons over the course of a month. Well, that's $400 that you now get to figure in to this average student value, which means that if I sell four private lessons a month and I sell that one and I, and I host that one seminar in the month and 5% of my hundred students come to that. And I also increase my retail sales a little bit. Then now my average student value is $112 and 
I'm now making $11,200 in gross revenue. And you can keep playing with these numbers and keep coming up with different ideas and different ways to increase the average student value. And I'm actually gonna have an entire video specifically on that subject. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'll title it 10 ways to increase average student value in your school. So uh, hit the uh, subscribe button and ring the little bell so that you don't miss that video when it comes out. But this is just numbers. This is just playing with the numbers that you have. And with all of this, again, we didn't have to increase the number of students that we have to increase the gross revenue. We simply had to increase the average student value to increase the gross revenue. So understanding this concept is incredibly important to growth and to scale. Growth and scale. And we're gonna talk about that in another video as well. But focus in, pay attention, average student value, and again, this is just the monthly example, is the amount of money that an average student is bringing in in the course of a month. And then we have the math. So understand this concept and figure out ways to increase average student value there you have growth, there you have more gross revenue, more gross revenue equals more money, more money equals better able to fulfill your mission because either you're able to reinvest that money back into advertising to bring more students into your school or you're able to reinvest physically in your school with better equipment, better merchandise, uh, maybe you have a bigger space because you're bringing in more money. Remember, martial business matters because martial money matters. And on that note, I'm going to leave you. Thanks for watching. Again, like, subscribe, ring the bell so you don't miss future updates. Marshall Business Matters because Marshall Money Matters. Thanks.